For those who've been following my series, uh, the Bloodlines Invader series, as you know, I've been talking extensively about DNA. Well, I came across this evening a story that I believe is going to show you that what I have been reporting to you in these videos is reality. It's real. It's not just simply um, my synthesizing information. This is really happening. I'm about to show you a story where they have now created organisms to create created with synthetic DNA. Are you understanding what I'm saying here? Synthetic DNA. Now, many people, I read some of your comments that were not quite getting that the AI, artificial intelligence, was creating its own digital DNA. Well, what you're about to see is how those building blocks happen. So as you can see, this came from The Guardian, came out today, Monday, January 23rd. And let's just read review this together. I think you're gonna find this rather interesting. Organisms created with synthetic DNA pave way for entirely new life forms. The E. coli microbes have been modified to carry an expanded genetic code, which researchers say will ultimately allow them to be programmed. Remember what I told you in the last video in The Ghost in the Machine? Well, that wasn't just me making this up. This is real. Now, I wasn't even aware of this story. So we're really going to have some uh, fun reading this together. All right. So this is a, a standard DNA molecule right here, right? All right. Let's continue on. From the moment life gained a foothold on Earth, its story has been written in a DNA code of four letters with G, T, C, and A. The molecules that pair up in the DNA helix, the lines between humans and all life on Earth are spelled out. Now the living, the first living organisms to thrive with an expanded genetic code have been made by researchers in work that paves the way for the creation and exploitation of entirely new life forms. Scientists in the U.S. modified common E. coli microbes to carry a beefed-up payload of genetic material which, they say, will ultimately allow them to program how the organisms operate and behave. Think about the implications of this, folks. I've laid it out for you. The work is aimed at making bugs that churn out new kinds of proteins which can be harvested and turned into drugs to treat a range of diseases. But the same technology could also lead to new kinds of materials, the researchers say. In a report published on Monday, the scientists described the modified microbes as a starting point for efforts to, quote-unquote, create organisms with wholly unnatural attributes and traits not found elsewhere in nature. The cells constitute a stable form of semi-synthetic life and lay the foundation for achieving the central goal of synthetic biology, the creation of new life forms and functions they had. Folks, think about this. And so what they do is they lay out how they've done this. So you get the bacteria's DNA, right? In this case, it's E. coli bacterium. All right. You can see how they begin. They modify the DNA, the DNA. And you really need to understand how they're doing this. They're doing this with the XY uh, chromosome. You'll see this. Synthetic DNA creates brand new proteins. Bingo. Now, we'll finish this out. Floyd Romsberg and his team at the Scripps Research Institute in California expanded the genetic code from four letters to six by adding two new molecules they call X and Y and adding them to the bug's genetic makeup. The microbes are modified to absorb new genetic material, which the scientists make separately and then feed to the cells. <laughs> 
They need to supply the bugs with the X and the Y molecules is meant to ensure that the cells will die should they somehow get out of the lab. Oh, really? <laughs> Comforting thought, isn't it? You know, I'm a victim of Lyme disease. Let me tell you about what happens when there's supposedly containment in the lab. But anyway, I digress. But Romsberg said that the, despite the protective measure, he still gets asked if he's seen Jurassic Park. We all know about the movie. I uh, continue on. In addition, evolution works by starting with something close and then changing what it can do in small steps. Remember what I told you about transhumanism? That transformation is a gradual process? Just like it is with the solar system. Same thing. Our X and Y are unlike natural DNA. So nature has nothing close to start with. We have shown many times that when you do not provide X and Y, the cells die every time. Do you see what I was telling you folks in the um, uh, Ghost in the Machine, particularly in part two? Our DNA, the code keeps collapsing. Now, I'm going to post this link so you can go ahead and finish reading the uh, article. But again, I wanted to bring this out just to show you that when I do these videos, they're just not made up. They really do have strong foundation of fact. And I wanted to show you the fact that, listen, synthetic DNA folks generating and creating new life forms. We're already doing it. And if you think that this hasn't gone beyond this, well... I think you might be unpleasantly surprised. I told you the digital DNA. If mankind can create synthetic DNA, don't tell me a computer who can think faster than any human cannot create its own digital DNA.